What happens when you take the kid from My Girl and mix it with Ruth Langmore from Ozark? In order to find out... You're gonna have to kill me! I'm sorry, I just wanted to use that clip. Well, I just finished Shonda Rhimes' latest Netflix show, Inventing Anna, based on the real story of Anna Sorokin, who stole hundreds of thousands of dollars from some of New York's wealthiest and almost got away with acquiring a $25 million loan. But the biggest crime here is actually how much better a show Inventing Anna could have been. So grab a VIP pass and make sure to like and subscribe. Because it's VIP. Don't you know how VIP works? Now, I just have to say it, I think this show could have been an amazing two-hour movie. I mean, when I first heard they were doing a limited series on this Anna woman, I was excited because who doesn't like to see rich assholes get scammed out of millions? That's the part that lured me in. It's the fun of the show and the way it was marketed. But Inventing Anna focuses more on Anna's friendships than it does on the con itself. Just take a look at episode one. Anna's only in it for about 10 minutes of its hour-long runtime, and it's not until episode four that we get into Anna's main con, acquiring the multi-million dollar loan. You could probably cut the first three episodes entirely and the show would still work. But hey, Shonda has this Netflix deal and she has to stretch out those stories. By focusing on the journalist and Anna's friends, you take away from the very reason many of us were brought into the show, the con. And when you add the fact that these characters aren't compelling nor do we care about them, the show drags. And I gotta tell you, I really didn't care about Anna. She's extremely unlikable, a pretentious narcissist who sees the world in terms of rich and poor. And if you're poor, well, you might as well be subhuman. She's extremely manipulative. On two different occasions, she tells her friends she'll commit suicide if they don't help her, and while on the phone with her lawyer's son, gives him the great advice that the two most powerful tools to get money are guilt and love. That's not to say an unlikable character like Anna can't be compelling to watch. Some of the greatest characters in film and TV history are not good people. You're goddamn right. It's Anna's brazenness to take on the wealthy elite, however, that draws us to her. It's a shame, then, that much of the show is bloated by plot that isn't about this. In fact, Anna isn't even the protagonist. That title belongs to Vivian Kent, whose character is based off the author who wrote the article the show draws from. Because Anna is such a static character, she doesn't go through any transformative change over the course of the season. The Anna at the beginning of the series is the same Anna at the end. She doesn't have any remorse for what she's done. In fact, she says her only mistake was to overestimate people's ability to handle stress. Your only mistake. And the cherry on top, one of Anna's final lines to Vivian. I don't like you. You have terrible shoes. This was a transaction we had to deal. Because Anna doesn't undergo a change, that falls on Vivian, who is the show's real protagonist. This change should be the impetus for us to care about her journey, but the show hides the very reason we should be rooting for her. Vivian was involved in a botched journalism piece which branded her as a bad journalist. This resulted in her losing her dream job at Bloomberg and why she was sent to Scriberia, where older writers live out their remaining days. If you wanted us to really care about Vivian and empathize with her drive to make sure the Anna piece is a hit, show us this moment. Don't hide it. Show us her being ridiculed. Show us her losing her dream job right as she finds out she's pregnant and her ability to support the child now in jeopardy. Let's watch her get ruined so it contextualizes her motivation to succeed. This has the added effect of the viewer connecting with her because who among us hasn't been in a situation where we've had things about us misrepresented? Presented, or we've been down and out through no fault of our own. The same goes with Anna's friends. There isn't really anything interesting about them, and I found myself half the time yelling at the screen wondering how they could still stick by her after all these lies. But I want to segue into something a little different. Who do you think the villain in the show is? Is it Anna, the wealthy New Yorkers, the assistant DA? Honestly, I'm not sure what the show is wanting me to think. The final episode plays out as a sympathy Hail Mary for Anna. The old writers cheer when Anna is found not guilty on two of the counts, but Anna was guilty. She's a criminal. Why are they cheering for her? But this also leads into what exactly the show is trying to say. Is conning okay if it allows you to realize your dreams and no one gets hurt? Can't be that. Lots of people did get hurt. Is it about a woman taking on the patriarchy and acting like a modern-day Robin Hood, as her lawyer describes? Can't be that either. Anna only cares about herself and even steals from her friends. 
So even though there are elements of social justice, like this scene where Trump's State of the Union plays in the background, there's zero consequences for these men. It feels more like an afterthought than part of the overall thematic argument the show is trying to make. On a personal note, and this just might be me, I didn't like the tone. There are scenes that are just downright goofy, like when Neff scares Rachel and she runs away, or this one. She used my bathroom, and I didn't have any toilet paper, and she did a number two, and the odor was incredible. The vibe felt like a broadcast show, which I didn't think this subject matter was deserving of. But perhaps the biggest scam of this whole show is that Netflix paid the real Anna $322,000 for the rights to her story. Granted, much of that went to her paying off legal fees, but it just goes to show you that even when she was in jail, Anna could make a few bucks. Now, I know I'm being a bit harsh on this show, but that's because I thought it could have been so much better, especially with Shonda Rhimes and Julia Garner behind it. If you do want to see some shows I absolutely hated, well, I have a whole playlist for that. But I want to hear what you thought about inventing Anna. Did you enjoy it? Was it meh? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember... You're gonna have to fucking kill me!